Ava Codes and welcome to the masterclass where you will learn such wonderful tools as Anaconda and Jupyter Notebook. Unfortunately, Anaconda is not issued along with a passport, that's why we have to download and install it first. To do so, we're heading to the official Anaconda website, anaconda.com, where we can download the latest version. So what do we need it for? Well, in short, it simplifies package management and deployment, and it's a must-know tool for anyone who is interested in data science or machine learning. It also allows you to configure several environments. For example, have Python's um, version on one uh, environment, and then you can easily switch to another one which will have a different version of Python. So we click on products and then we choose individual edition and then we click download. Here we can see a lot of information. I'm not sure this is useful or not, but we are sniping this install Anaconda. And as you can see, we have uh, Windows, Mac and Linux. And I'm going to use 64 bit version for Windows. And basically here it is. I can now launch it. This is how Anaconda Navigator looks. And in here, I've got some cool stuff such as PyCharm and Orange, but we are interested in the Jupyter Notebook. And as you can see, it is here, the third from the left. So if we'll click on environments, we'll see a huge list of various stuff we have already installed. And we can also choose not installed to see whether uh, we can add any package we'd like. So Thousands of new packages are created every year. So if we want to add something that is not on the list um, or not installed uh, from start, let's say we want uh, MongoDB. So I'm going to type MongoDB in search and then I can download it, apply, and we see here the process. But if we can't find something, we can always use um, the packages created by communities. So we click on channels and in here we're gonna add another channel which is called forge conda forge so I type in conda dash forge so once it's added this is another source where we can look for the packages that we cannot find in the official anaconda um, package list Okay, so now we have a set of um, configured applications um, for this particular environment. And this is like our home, like root environment. But this doesn't mean we cannot add more environments and configure them as we would like. For example, we can preset everything for a specific project. So let's say I want to create a new environment pre-populated with packages that I want and then I can just switch between the environments so as you can see I can choose the version of Python so and now I have two environments created and now we can check it out it will look different to our home environment so we can switch it here applications on as you can see um, we don't have Jupyter we do have Jupyter but it's not installed, so we can click install and we can add some more packages that we want for a specific task. And as you could probably guess, we can just uh, switch between the environments um, in this drop down menu applications on. All right, but let's talk about Jupyter. Jupyter Notebook has a modal interface. This means that um, the keyboard does different things depending on which mode uh, we're in in this uh, notebook. Jupyter Notebook also uses the system called REPL, which allows us to embed the code into a web-based document containing other information such as text, images, data, and as well as the tab for file system, it also has tabs for running. So we can see which um, notebooks we are running at the moment. Though in this case, we run none. So we're going to start new one on Python 3. So to do that, we just clicked new notebook. 
So it's going to use the localhost. And here it is. First things first, we need to give it a name. So I'm clicking on the untitled three and I'm going to rename it to something like Ave Training. And here we can see the field where we can enter our code as well as this uh, vertical blue bar to the left, which basically visualize what mode we are in. So I'll touch on that a bit later. But for now, You'll notice as soon as I have chosen that field, the blue bar became green. So essentially this is the mode where we are expected to enter the code. So if I'm going to launch it with uh, some text right now, I'm going to get an error. So as you'll see, Alt Enter. And we can see that we get a syntax error, invalid syntax. And so this is because it was expecting code, but we have entered just plain text. But we can um, always let uh, Jupyter know that we're going to enter the text, so he will treat it as text. So let's say we'll um, enter some text, answer the question, and we're going to go into cell tab, and in cell type, we're going to choose the markdown. And if I'm going to click on that keyboard icon, to the right, I can see the list of all shortcuts. So please have a look, this saves the time enormously. So if I'll tap in mark, we can see there is a shortcut for the markdown, command plus M. And as well as enter the command mode or show command palette, um, whatever. Once the cell type was change so now Jupyter treats it as a text and it expects the text so we can launch the cell now and perfectly we are just getting some text and similarly if uh, the type of the cell is chosen as markdown and I put in some uh, math uh, stuff in it like two multiply by two it will be treated just as plain text so if I'll run it now, you'll see that it is just a text. A handy tip, if we want to delete a previous cell, um, we can just um, press escape and DD, and it's gonna delete the uh, cell before. And another handy tip about the markdown, we can also change the size by adding the hash. So one hash is um, the biggest size of the text, two smaller, three smallest, and so on and so forth. Jupyter also allows us to incorporate formulas into its canvas. In many cases, when we're going to be working with uh, some kind of machine learning algorithm, most likely it will have a formula that represents this algorithm. So before implementing the code, we could actually import the formula and uh, Jupyter allows to do that. In essence, it uses the latex uh, engine so if we can copy the formula just um, in this uh, in this way, it uh, nicely represents it now. Um, so go ahead and visit Jupyter Notebook uh, documentation so we can uh, copy another formula, which is a cross product formula. So if you don't know Latex, I would recommend you to have a look what it is um, as well. It is commonly used in the university and academic environment and it allows us to uh, produce sleek uh, looking formulas. So once again, if you're gonna be going down uh, the data science or machine learning path, especially if you're gonna be taking a course um, at the university, I'd recommend looking into Latex and the way it is incorporated um, with uh, Jupyter Notebook. So let's get back to the uh, two by two example. So it gives us four immediately. We don't need to write any functions or methods or anything else. It just reads as it goes. Uh, you probably notice that there are numbers uh, next to in and out. This means the order of execution. So if I'm going to put another one and run it several times, we can see that it changed to nine and then consequently to 10. So we also can import uh, libraries into our Jupyter Notebook. So for example, NumPy, which we're gonna have a tutorial on, 
So now we imported a NumPy as alias np, and we can actually now use all methods available in NumPy. So for example, um, numpy.sin, which will give us a sinus of 90, but this number looks kind of weird. So we want to find out what is actually going on. So we're going to use the question mark um, to get the help. So np.sin.question mark, and we get the full help. And we can see from here that is actually producing the result in radians, not the actual degrees. And if you'd like to see use cases, we're going to put two question marks. So NP sin uh, question mark question mark. And here we can see the extended help with actual uh, the use cases in uh, Python code on the way we can use this function. So this is quite useful. Uh, you don't need to switch to the uh, internet to Google and then type something in. You can actually get help and um, examples in code straight into Jupyter Notebook. And next, I'd like to talk about um, something that's called the magic commands. So basically, they are enhancements added over the normal Python code. And these magic commands are usually prefixed by a percentage character. And as you can see, percentage pwd gives us our working current directory. And if we'd like to apply these magic commands not to a single cell, but to the whole notebook, we can use the double percentage sign. So for example, we want to find out uh, how long does it take to execute a loop. So we put uh, percentage percentage time, and then we uh, write a simple loop for x in range 10. And we're going to print the, uh, the sinus 10 times. So we uh, put np dot sign, um, let it be sinus of two. So here we go. And we can see the result as well as the time it took to execute this bit of code. So I'm going to copy and paste it here. And I'm going to change the sinus to five. And we can see again, there's not much difference in uh, the uh, execution time. So to read about these magic commands and see what kind of magic commands are available um, to us. So we can put um, percent sign magic and we can see it will display the whole lot, the full help, which contains the list of these uh, magic commands. And so to show what can we do with this uh, Jupyter notebook, uh, just to show the capabilities of the notebook, I'm just going to copy and paste um, some code. So this is just a brief demo. To show you how histograms look, um, we're going to have a tutorial on NumPy and we're going to have a tutorial on Matplotlib in this playlist as well. So this is just a visualization of some code and we have some um, graphs with it. And now a few words about the checkpoints. So we can save our notebook and we can see the checkpoint is created. And in here in file, we can revert to the checkpoint. So in this case, we're gonna be reverting to the last one, um, which just um, happened now. But in case we have done something that we actually regret doing, we can always revert to the point before that. Well, I'm just going to produce a random error and then revert to the last checkpoint and we see the error no more. A couple of more tricks. If we want to move some cells up or down, we can select the cell and use the arrows so we can move the cell right up and as well as we can move the cell down. This is so that we can be in control of the order of the execution because Jupyter Notebook will execute cells from top to bottom. And now a few words about Jupyter Runtime. So Jupyter, when it launches a new notebook, it uses something called kernel. So this is the process that runs in the background. So if we'll um, close our notebook, but our Jupyter will remain open. It will still run this kernel, so we need to shut it down. In order to do that, we're going to go under the kernel 
menu and choose the shutdown. And as you can see right now, we have no kernels running, so no memory is eaten, and we can continue working with some other projects. So we're going to be using Jupyter Notebook or its cousin, the Google Colab, a lot, especially in the playlists um, dedicated to the uh, NumPy and Matplotlib and machine learning and data science. So please give this video Empress thumbs up, toll the bell and subscribe. That was V. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye now. Thank you.